Synology and AD, Active Directory. How do you get a Synology NAS to talk to Active Directory? I've used Synology NAS personally and in the enterprise, and when it is bound to Active Directory, it makes authentication so much easier. How do you log in? Can you use users? Can you use security groups that are configured in Active Directory on your Synology NAS? Yes, you can. You can apply permissions against files, against folders, against shares, against applications, all using AD permissions. What you do across the socials by subscribing as well, clicking on the button on the bell so that you don't miss out on any of my videos. I want to let you know about a full length Synology NAS training course that I have available. Even if you're starting out in Synology or you've been using Synology for a while, I've got hours and hours of content on becoming a expert and a professional on using your Synology NAS. Now we are assuming you've got a Synology NAS. It's already set up, it's ready to go. You've been using it, you've been logging in, you've been doing all that sort of stuff. And then you've also got a Active Directory environment set up, a domain set up somewhere on your network. Now we also wanna make sure that there's obviously no interference between your Synology NAS and AD that all your routes are in place, there is a, if there is a firewall, that the firewall ports are open. There's no network connectivity between these two devices. So let's cross over to our Synology NAS right now. We're gonna log in and then start setting it all up. So what I'm gonna show you is my domain control up. So I've got here in my lab environment, here is a Windows server uh, running Active Directory. So this is a domain controller running Active Directory. I can open up the Active Directory area right here and I can see a little bit more information. I can see that my domain is called redghost.com. Okay, and I've got a number of OUs, or essentially the folders, they're called organizational units, or I've got uh, computers and servers and storage devices and users all configured within here, right? So say, here are some users in here, here are some computers, etc. Here's some other computers. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect that Synology now so that it appears as a computer, essentially binding your Synology NAS to Active Directory and then giving the appropriate permissions to users uh, to access my Synology NAS. Now on top of this is also security groups. So for example, in the users OU down here, there's a whole bunch of these things called security groups and essentially these contain users within them. So very similar like on the Synology NAS where you had users and then you can assign them to groups. Well, I've got, for example, a domain admin security group and as a member of this one is these three users. So administrator, Emilio, and test user are three users, members, that are part of the domain admin security group. Okay, so what, that's essentially a little bit of a context there. We've opened up control panel and we've now selected domain slash LDAP. LDAP is one technology that we're not gonna cover specifically, but essentially you can still use authentication through LDAP, what we are gonna be focusing on, and I think it's a better method to actually get your whole Synology NAS authenticated and joined to the domain so you can take full advantage of what Active Directory offers and what it gives you and grants you access to on your Synology NAS. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna tick on Join Domain. All right, that's the very first step. And now you have to enter in your domain. All right, so your domain name. Now, if you remember that my domain name right here is redghost.com. Your domain will be whatever it is in your organization, wherever you are that you are using your Synology NAS. We're gonna enter in that domain, right? So I've got redghost.com. I am gonna mention right here that you need to ensure that there is no interference between your Synology NAS and your domain slash domain controller. You may need to work with other people in your organization to ensure that there's no routes, that there are no firewall ports that are blocked. So you wanna make sure that there is full in, you know, connections between the two devices, that everything is open on the network. The firewall rules are there to be able to allow connection between the two because otherwise this will fail. All right, so just be aware of that. So first things first is uh, adding my domain, redghost.com. I'm gonna add in my DNS server. All right, this is the IP address of my DNS server of one of them. You can add more than one into here. And that is just left there. Management mode is trusted domain. We're gonna just say trusted domain. We're gonna leave that as the default. Now, the next step is I'm gonna tick on advanced domain options. And I'm gonna now input my DC. This is domain controller, IP or FQDN, which is a fully qualified name. All right, now I know that my fully qualified name of my, of my domain controller is DC serve one So I could do DC serve one 
www.redghost.com. I could also input my IP address of my domain controller which in my case is the same as my DNS server. So this is the DNS server because I've got DNS running on my domain controller, okay? And that's it right there. What is the domain net BIOS name? Well, in this case, it's also gonna be Red Ghost and my domain FQDN is redghost.com. Register DNS interface. Well, in our case, we've got two LAN ports. So I'm gonna select that I wanna do both of them, all right? And that is it. Update user group list. We're gonna say daily, weekly, monthly, or disabled. So what this is gonna do is gonna automatically scan. We'll, we'll cover this in a, little bit, in a little bit, but automatically scan and update users and groups as you're adding new users into your domain. So you could do that automatically, daily, weekly, or monthly, or you can set it so that it's disabled and you have to kick it off manually. So we're just gonna leave that as disabled and we'll cover that in a little bit, okay? So uh, that's the first step. So now we're gonna select apply. Actually, before we do that, let's just talk about one thing re very, very quickly, is what this is gonna do by default, it is going to create a computer account. So if you remember in here, I've got some computers in here, in the computers OU, here are some computers, they're real life computers. So by default, the root level here, redghost.com, I've got a computers OU, so this is the very top level. By default, it's gonna to try to add the name of my NAS into creating a computer within this area right here. The other option that you could do is you could go, for example, let's say you wanna put it in here, you could right click and say new computer and then give it the relevant name, which is the name of your Synology NAS, okay? That's another option as well. And back onto here, we're gonna now say apply. What are the administrator username and password of the Windows domain you want to use? This is not Synology NAS credentials. This is Active Directory credentials, so an AD user. So we're gonna input that in. I've got an account called Emilio, which is a domain administrator. And we're gonna input our password. Specify OU. You can actually say, I want it to go into this OU, or by default, it'll stick it into that computer's OU that we saw just before. But we're gonna leave that as a default. Select next. Here's what's gonna happen. And we're gonna select OK. Now, there are a few checks that are now taking place and we're hoping that you've got ticks across all of them. That looks really good. I've got six ticks. Now, if you do not have that, if you've got one of them with a little exclamation mark or something's gone wrong, you're going to have to go and double check why there are connection issues between your Synology NAS and your domain controller. It could be some of the settings that you input right here under the join area. There could be something in here that you've put incorrectly. It could be the credentials that you've used are not the right credentials and you may need something with elevated privileges or it could be a network issue, something like a firewall or some routes or some ports or something that is not set up correctly there. So just be aware of that. We can now select finish. Great, so connection status is green, it's connected. So what we can now do is you'll see that there's a couple of new tabs that have now appeared within the domain area. You've got domain users, you've got domain group. Now what we do right here is we can go into one of these and you'll see that it is currently updating a domain user group list. Domain operation will be available in a few minutes. If you remember back on our domain controller, it's gonna populate all of the available users. It's gonna do a scan of our entire domain controller, our entire domain, and then populate all of the users. And there you go. So domain users has now been populated. You'll see that all of these are the users that exist on my domain. Under domain group, it's actually gone and it's found all of my security groups. Now, um, if you remember before, under here, where we looked at this area, user group list, daily, weekly, monthly, disable. So if I go into my domain controller and I'm gonna go and create a new user, let's say you've got a team of people, you've got, you're adding new users, you're deleting users, you're adding new security groups, you're deleting security groups. Well, they will not populate onto here automatically. You're gonna to have to tick on or click on update domain data and it'll actually scan everything again and then populate it. So by actually going into here and setting this to do it daily, it'll do it automatically every whatever. Now, the next step is obviously now to grant these accounts access to something because just because they're in here doesn't mean they can actually do anything. You won't be able to log in to anything because we haven't allocated them. If I know that Emilio is part of a domain group or a security group called domain admins. So I want by default all of my domain admins to be able to administer this NAS. So I'm gonna select that, I'm gonna select on edit. You've got the list of all of your uh, shares. Remember these are corresponding to these right here under our file station. So I'm gonna select, I want read write against all of those. Don't want quotas and applications. I wanna allow all of my applications to be able to get access to that, okay? 
and select OK. But you're not gonna have full admin rights into your NAS just yet. To do that, we wanna go back into domain and then down the bottom, you've got domain options. You'll see there's a button here called domain administrators. We wanna tick on that. And within here, we now want to add the users or the security groups that need to have full admin rights to my NAS, All right? So I'm gonna select add, and I'm here gonna select domain admins, add. Let's just do one more because maybe I've got some uh, users that are enterprise admins as well, and add. Okay, we can select finish and apply. And that's it. So now those accounts are ready to go. So if everything has now worked correctly, so we've done domain users, we've done domain groups, we've added them to domain options and added them as a domain administrator for the Synology NAS. All right, we can now close out of here. We can now log off and we're now gonna log in with an Active Directory account. So an AD user and then the password for that account. If you remember that my Emilio user is a domain admin, it's been added to that group. I can now sign in. It's actually gone in and actually created an account. And I've got now full access to my Synology NAS as a Active Directory user. Hopefully you were able to do this in your environment. Why don't you let me know in the comments whether this was successful for you, whether you were able to get this working in your environment. If you did also like this video, please do remember to always give me a like and a thumbs up. And remember that if you wanna learn more around the Synology NAS, I've got a full length training course, hours of content, where you learn more about the Synology NAS and you'll become an expert. Check that out in the show notes in the description below. And do also subscribe clicking on my face on the bell on the button so you don't miss out on anything. And check out some of my other videos where we talk about all things tech on this channel. Thanks again. We'll talk to you next time.